Eastern Europe is in a state of turmoil, with the Russians asserting evident dominance over Ukraine and inspiring fear in any neighboring European country threatening that dominance. This fear has enveloped neighboring countries, giving birth to the need for insurance against the otherwise belligerent Russia. One of these neighbors is Finland, a country that has maintained a relatively non-aligned posture up until now. Finland is one of the most peaceful countries in Europe. However, with the current state of the continent and the fact that Russia is creating a move to submerge the sovereignty of other European countries, it appears to be time to pick a side. And the organization that is most likely to inspire their safety is NATO. How would Russia take Finland's decision to join NATO? Would it be a wise choice for Finland after years of non-alignment? And would they be able to keep up with the laws that come with being in that organization? Join us as we answer all these questions and more in this video. But before we begin, thank you for choosing to watch another one of our amazing videos. To enjoy more of these videos, subscribe to Economics Reasons, and don't forget to click the notification bell to get a front row seat. Now, let's begin. Desperate times call for desperate measures. With Russia's unforeseen and almost dictatorial move against the otherwise less powerful Ukraine, it's clear that any nation that tries to go against its rule will be next. With a plethora of Ukrainians left internally displaced, infrastructures destroyed, and a host of other sinews of war, it is poignant that the invasion is no joke to Russia, and any neighboring country would be next. The war between Russia and Ukraine began with Ukraine's declaration of its intentions to join the North Atlantic Treaty Organization, popularly known as NATO. What started as a simple chide, as media personalities called it, has skyrocketed into a full-blown war, with Ukraine being at the receiving end of Russia's bombs, bullets, and ballistic missiles. We have a video on the Russia-Ukraine war, and you can click the link in our bio to go check it out. Now, there is a current need for other neighboring eastern countries to safeguard their interests. Russia may most likely come for them at some point, considering their dictatorial tendencies, hence the current scramble for international and continental backup. Finland, one of Russia's neighbors, has declared their intentions to join NATO. This intention came in the wake of the invasion of Ukraine. No leader would watch their constitution, sovereignty, and, most importantly, the life of their citizens dwindle at the hands of another country without taking drastic steps toward preventing that situation. According to Finland's Minister for Foreign Affairs, Finland will be ready to send its application to join the NATO military alliance after completing a few more steps. Finland has always been a non-aligned country in Europe. From the days of the Cold War, they've tried to maintain a balance between the Eastern and the Western Bloc. But times have changed, and the almost very dire situation of Ukrainians have taught them to pick a side for the protection of their dignity as a country, as well as to safeguard the lives of its citizens if anything does end up happening. There are visible reasons Russia is vehemently against any European countries aligning themselves with NATO. However, one may not know these reasons until one knows the origin of the organization. The fact here is that Russia is in a war to protect and preserve what is left of Europe. European history, according to them. This includes integrity and culture, but then the world may not see it that way. Maybe because their instrument of force is the fundamental reason for the hate and fear they've inspired. The North Atlantic Treaty Organization, popularly known as NATO, was created by the United States of America and Canada in collaboration with a host of Western European nations in 1949, four years after the Second World War. The organization was created to foster peace and unity, and to provide collective security against the Soviet Union, of which Russia was at the forefront. NATO was the first peacetime military alliance the United States entered outside of the Western Hemisphere. After the destruction brought by World War II, the nations of Europe struggled to rebuild their economies and ensure their security. The former required an enormous pool of personnel to help the war-ridden landscapes rebuild industries and produce food and the latter required assurances against a resurgent Germany or an invasion from the Soviet Union. The United States viewed an economically strong, rearmed, and integrated Europe as vital to the prevention of communist expansion across the continent. So, as a result, Secretary of State George Marshall proposed a program of large-scale economic aid to Europe. 
The resulting European Recovery Program, or Marshall Plan, not only facilitated European economic integration, but promoted the idea of shared interests and cooperation between the United States and Europe. Soviet refusal either to participate in the Marshall Plan or to allow its satellite states in Eastern Europe to accept the economic assistance helped to reinforce the growing division between East and West in Europe. A series of events caused the nations of Western Europe to become concerned about their physical and political security between 1947 and 1948. The United States became more closely involved with European affairs to help quell the impending unrest and to forestall another world war. War. The ongoing civil war in Greece, along with tensions in Turkey, led President Harry S. Truman to assert that the United States would provide economic and military aid to both countries, as well as to any other nation struggling against an attempt at subjugation. However, the Soviet Union and some parts of Germany recognized the U.S. as the true enemies. They would not dance to the music of the United States, which, according to the Soviets, are fanning their interest and creating an overlord system in Europe. A coup sponsored by the Soviet Union in Czechoslovakia resulted in a communist government coming to power on the borders of Germany. Attention also focused on elections in Italy as the Communist Party had made significant gains amongst Italian voters. Furthermore, events in Germany also caused concern. The occupation and governance of Germany after the war had long been disputed, and in 1948, Soviet Premier Joseph Stalin chose to test Western resolve by implementing a blockade against West Berlin. Joseph Stalin constituted a formidable force in the Soviet Union and championed what has now come to be known as the Holomodor in Ukraine, a man-made famine that claimed a lot of lives. This was fundamental to check the excesses of Ukraine and to discourage any thought of leaving the fold. If you want to know more about the man-made famine, then check the link in the description box down below. The organization was created by 12 founding members in 1949. This included Belgium, Canada, Denmark, France, Iceland, Italy, Luxembourg, the Netherlands, Norway, Portugal, the United Kingdom, and finally, the United States. However, they have grown to have 30 loyal and very committed countries and is gradually fixing to be 31 if Ukraine does decide to put in their application. As is common knowledge, Finland is one of the most peaceful countries in Eastern Europe, but for the war between Ukraine and Russia, I doubt Finland would make any major headlines. The fact remains that the sovereignty of all the countries in Eastern Europe is questionable and can be reviewed by Russia at any slight provocation. And that is what Finland's trying to guard against. The Nordic nation has been considering joining the alliance in the wake of Russia's unprovoked incursion of Ukraine. Finland's Prime Minister, Sanna Marin, has noted previously that the invasion changed the security policy situation in such a way that there is no going back to the way things were. As has been said earlier on, Finland has maintained a relatively strong level of non-alignment. However, joining NATO would mark a sharp U-turn in Finland's decades-long policy of neutrality, but could lead to a backlash from Russia, where President Vladimir Putin has been vocal about his opposition to NATO enlargement. It was Ukraine's declaration of its intention that led to the war in the first place. For Russia, the US in particular, and NATO in general, would disrupt the cultures of Eastern Europe. What the culture is, we don't know exactly. But it is in their best interest not to join the organization and leave them open to external attacks. It's fundamentally a play of history, a tussle for power, and protection of their borders from unprecedented invasion. Putin and his predecessors identified the US as the enemy and would not be a party to any system that would give them relative control over them. And apparently, they would prevent any neighboring country from doing so as well. Pekka Havisto, the Minister for Foreign Affairs, has explained the steps that need to be taken before Finland submits their application in an interview. When all of our political parties are ready, and at the latest, the Social Democrats, then we're ready to move as a government forward. And then this discussion, of course, on the NATO membership will come to the parliament starting very soon. But then we are, after all, ready to send an application. If Finland is currently led by a five-party coalition government, Finnish President Sauli Ninisto is due to announce his opinion on the country's membership in NATO, kicking off a sequence of events that should result in the formal application being sent through. 
Finland is not the only country considering an alignment with NATO. Sweden is also reconsidering their security policy. With the current belligerency in Ukraine, Sweden has started viewing its security stance. Pekka Havisto expressed the enthusiasm of both countries in an interview with a popular media room, CNBC. I've been really much in favor of us, Finland and Sweden, joining together, and now it looks like we have a parallel process, which could end similarly. He went further to say that we have very good cooperation on military issues with Sweden. Actually, we can have a common surveillance of our airspace, on our maritime areas, and so forth. And we are relying very much on each other. And of course, if it so happens in the future that one is in the defense alliance and the other one is not, that might hamper also our good cooperation, he said about the reasoning behind applying at the same time. Several NATO members, notably Germany and the United States, have said that they're ready to provide security guarantees to Stockholm and Helsinki during the period between their applications and official membership. Before both countries join the defense alliance, the 30 members already in NATO have to approve their applications, a process that is likely to take at least some months. In all, Finland is driven by the need to protect lives and property, and also to strengthen its sovereignty. However, joining NATO, another organization that may likely put a limitation on their sovereignty, the best way to go. Would it not be better to invest in their own military, improve their arsenals, and stay neutral? These are questions that most political analysts have asked and are still asking. Let us know your thoughts about Finland's move to join NATO in the comments section down below. Also, don't forget to like this video and subscribe for more amazing content. We'll see you next time.